for tomorrow's scrimmage going to be? Uh, well, for, for fans it will be two times 45 normal game. Uh, for us, we'll be three teams playing 30 minutes each. Okay. Uh, so we'll have, uh, of course, at the beginning of each group, we'll have, uh, we will clean up the score line, whatever is the score before okay. that. We will start fresh with the next group, and that will be the mentality of the group. Uh, but yeah, we're very excited about the first uh, preseason game. You were talking about last week that y'all purposefully made all these preseason games road games because you want to get the team tougher. I guess, for lack of a better word, on the road. So what are you hoping to see from each group tomorrow in like the first five minutes of those 30-minute periods? Well, a big word for us this year is going to be consistency. So trying to do the same things that we normally try to do at the bench or here at training session, trying to do away. That's the best way trying to achieve points. Uh, so yeah, I'm more focused about the, uh, the performance and working the things that we've been working the last uh, two weeks. Uh, but obviously, I want to see desire. I want to see passion willingness to win and to attack and to be uh, on the front foot uh, so yeah but those are probably the main two things that we, I want to see. Will the three teams be like the first team mostly starters or is it gonna be starters sprinkled throughout the three teams? Well we'll see. Presume starters. Yeah well, we'll <laughs> see we'll see we're, we're having some ideas we want to kind of uh, mix a little bit certain things we want to see certain you know uh, pairs working together I guess but uh, I want to be more uh, two balanced teams and then the other group will be all of our beloved academy kids <laughs> that we're very excited to see uh, honestly the kids been amazing they've been working the big majority of that group will be uh, uh, been working with us for two weeks obviously some of them we knew from the past but uh, we have very good academy kids we have very good the, the, the future is bright with with academy uh Stian's first training session was today they were able to see Anything from him in, in this short time? Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, he has some presence. You, you notice that if you got to see a little bit of the, of his game, he has some physical presence there to defend, to to attack the ball, very good in the air, uh, very solid, aggressive center back. Uh, he's fast, so I, I think he has all the attributes that we saw uh, on film. And these first 10, 11 days of training. Uh, are you seeing what you've hoped to see in this time, the progress that you're hoping to see? I mean, it's early stages, of course. It's the first week was almost a reintro. We put across some very general, big, big principles for us in the way we play. But this week was more about defending middle block, lower block, and, and how we are going to be organizing that. Uh, so it's still early stages, but the, the trends are very positive. Who's playing as the 10 right now with Tiago not being here? <laughs> Well, uh, we have a couple options there. I'm putting Firmino uh, okay. uh, one, then maybe Derek Tien, you know, Tyler can play there. So that those are the little details that we need to, to figure it out. Uh, but yeah, uh, we have options there. We can play also four for two in certain moments. Right. You know, we have good strikers. So yeah, uh, very good. Gonzalo, we were talking to Derek Williams, and he said that uh, when he was acquired by Atlanta and whatever draft it was, uh, that you called him, talked to him, you said you guys talked for about 45 minutes, a lot of it about tactics. Um, what was that conversation like, first of all? And can you, how much tactics can you get into after you just signing it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my fault. Normally, the first, <laughs> yeah. the first couple of conversations, I want to talk more about, you know, the motivation and the family and all these. We, we touch base on that, of course, but suddenly the conversation starts to turn into tactics and, and I just wanted to, to let him know what type of team he was coming up and, and what type of football he wanted to play. For me, when I was looking as a player to move to a new club or something like that, yes, the city is very important, my family and, you know, the culture of the club and what type of club it is, what represents that club. Uh, but I, always, I was always excited about the the coach's ideas and what was going to be my role in that system and what what was the idea of the coach uh, are we going to be an attacking minded football we're going to be more conservative and, and that so me talking about football excited me right away so suddenly the conversation with Derek that day started to be more about tactics uh, and, and the idea that we have uh, to, to be aggressive uh, attacking minded football trying to overload the opponent and even him as a defender can affect all that he, he's the 
first or second with the goalkeeper there, attacker on the field. When we start to build, they have to be aggressive. They have to be willing to break lines on the ground, play uh, possession style, but also be willing to play through the line. So all these little details, we start to talk. Uh, he was already excited about it. And, and yeah, it was a very good conversation. And, and yeah, he, he's going to be a great addition. When when um, you have that kind of conversation with the player, and he kind of described himself also as being a big communicator on the field um, at his position, he's he's probably not just you know slotted in as like what we probably expect to be like the first choice center back pairing. But can you talk about what kind of benefits a character like him has as being a guy who might be rotating in and out of the team? Yes, of course he he is going to be a great addition again because he has uh, you know. Uh, some good background in England, playing in good clubs in England. Then he came here in, in Galaxy. I faced him with Sounders many times mm -hmm. and we always remember him as a very good aggressive center back. So so he's not a new guy for me. I know him since a long time ago. Um, and then, you know, the opportunity came. He has some uh, communication skills on the field, which cannot hurt. And uh, he, he can be very impactful in that. And again, he's going to be part of that competition. And, and yes, uh, happy with having him. Uh, great guy. He's been integrating very, very well and blending with the with the group. So it's very, very good signing. Uh, more broadly, just speaking about the preseason in general, I imagine things kind of change when you go off to camp, when you get out of here, and you know, I'm sure like the conditioning aspect and stuff starts to ramp up. What are you What are you trying to accomplish in this phase of preseason, whatever it is right now? Well, a couple of things. It's, it's all at the same time, you know. There, there are some uh, nowadays we modern coaches we try to complicate the game and put faces of the game and divide every little aspect of the game. And at the end of the day, you know, you need all all of it at the same time, right? Football is about mainly four four situations or faces: mm -hmm. attacking, defending, transitions, and set pieces or restarts. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, you have to be good on, on all of those, right? We have certain objectives and certain days is more defending, certain is more attacking, certain is more specific on play from the goal kick, build up, final third, uh, high press, middle block, low block, all these things. But at the end, you need the players to be good, good footballers. So, so we're working on everything at the same time. Again, uh, the first week was kind of an intro with some uh, soft soft principles on how we want to attack. Uh, and then this week was more about our middle block and lower block, how we want to defend. Next week will be more likely more attacking. And then we will go to the face of Tampa. And then there we will have uh, two games. And then we will go to Miami. We'll have our final game against uh, Kansas City. So the first week in Tampa, so the week in Tampa will be more playing and seeing all of these together and trying to see it in games. Montreal is a very good game for us because it might be very similar to what we are facing in Columbus. Uh, and then, uh, then on Saturday, again, another good opportunity against a very good USL team. And then we have another week to work before the game against Kansas to, to see what's been going well, what's, what we need to improve based on the two tests that we had that week. Uh, and then we will have the final preparation for Columbus. That's, that's kind of the general plan. And then just one last one for me. Um, the team in general feels like more kind of set at this point last last year this time it seemed like there were a lot of more question marks around players and who could be potentially leaving does it feel like that to you and does that kind of give you confidence as the coach going into this yes great job by the front office i think uh, it's not easy in mls because of the windows and the markets in europe and all these things and the rules the visas i mean we're still dealing with with uh with bartos uh visa uh, but overall, it's been great. It's been one of the best years since I'm in MLS that we have the whole team together, ready to go. And just little details, Thiago's missing, Caleb Wiley's uh, has a little issue in the shoulder, Edwin Mosquera with injury that he picked up in, in his national team. But overall, the team is set and we can work with this and we can have an idea of what we are going to do. Uh, so yeah, very, very happy with that side of, of things. Derek also mentioned that you call this team a family. What did you guys do in the preseason to really help establish that feel as a family on this team? Well, it's been the, the culture that, that we've been all together creating here since, since probably since I arrived or, or since then. I, I feel that every year has been an improvement in terms of the culture. Uh, 
uh, probably them last year were the ones that sold this family and from there I just picked it up from that and, and just tried to recreate that because it's great when you come here to spend X amount of hours here, six, eight hours and and you know you are with your brothers, with your cousins here and you are like a family and then we're all together in this and we have jokes and we have laughs but we also have hard work so we all, all work as a family and that's amazing that they perceive also uh, we are trying to have uh, you know certain guidelines on how we want to behave every day what are our core values what are uh, our uh, routines to continue with that family topic and family environment that we want uh, and then in Tampa for sure we'll have a couple meetings with Ben Prickley to be an amazing to help with uh, helping with the creation or the development of our culture uh, and uh, and we will have a couple of sites uh, dinners and just trying to create that chemistry among the players blending the new guys into the system and all this but overall for me uh, Culture is always evolving, it's always uh, the daily behaviors that you do. So it's not about just talking, it's not about just uh, having meetings and dinners, it's about how we behave since, since we enter from the front door, right? Uh, how is our positive mindset? Are we positive? Are we excited to be here again? Are we looking forward to be on the field? Are we uh, treating people with respect, saying good morning, good afternoon, goodbye, thank you, please? Very easy words to say, but it has to be daily, right? So those little things. We, we talk to the players about that, so again, continuously evolving and hopefully it's getting a, an even better year. Talk about preseasons, about you know fitness, getting the legs, the tactics. Are there, are there things you can do to build mental toughness? Are there drills or how do you how do you go about you know getting these guys ready for an 85th minute when you're down a goal or whatever it is? Well, that's a very, very good question. Uh, we have had a couple of discussions like that. You know, we have, one of the best, if not the best, uh, sports science department in the league. Uh, Ryan, Andy, they are doing a great, great job with the loads, the GPS, and the methodology, periodization, and making sure that the players are fit, but at the same time they are endurable and they don't have too many injuries. Last year was very good in terms of numbers uh, of HIV, VHIV, all this stuff that we like, but also the best uh, in Atlanta United history in terms of injuries, the less amount of injuries, right? So we want to keep up with that, but at times, you know, you are too uh, mathematical and clinical on those numbers, and you miss a little bit the, the test, the mentality of the players, right? So I think this year we are trying to have certain drills, certain ideas, overloading a little bit more to see who, when they are tired in the training session, and it's still is a small side of game for before, and the last two rounds they are dead, who continues fighting, who's still fighting, and who's still concentrating, who's still you know, competing for winning. And those type of behaviors we see in those type of days. Just, uh, two days ago we had one of those and, and it was very good. Uh, and a couple of drills where you test only the mentality playing against uh, double numbers. Uh, six, uh, eight players defending 16, for example, just two, two goals. And, and you test a little bit that receiving, that mentality, and that uh, fighting, grinding. And, and, you know, it's not just about tactics and playing nice football. So yes, we have some of that, uh, and the appropriate days we are going to continue doing that uh, throughout the whole season. Is that a struggle between you and the physio to say, hey, we can we can go a little more, or we can do one extra period or whatever it is? No, not really, not really, because they understand football, they understand what is this about, and, and they've been great since I am here. Of course, we have certain conversations or uh, differences of opinions on certain things, but at the end we all come to an agreement and I think it's been very good. The collaboration with them has been amazing and I'm looking forward to continue this uh, this year. Is a sports psychologist you all used last year returning this year? Yeah, Ben, yes. Okay. yes. He will uh, meet us uh, in the camp in, in Tampa. Do you have an update on uh, Slice's visa? No, not yet. Uh, hopefully we have good news next year, next next week. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but, but it will. Because compared to last year, like Gregerson's got that his really quickly. Yes. So I was curious if Slice, if y'all expected the same. Yes. Hopefully, it's, it's, you know, hopefully we can have some good news next year, next week again. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but yeah, it's been very good. Honestly, they've been working really hard in the front office with all these pieces and bringing them earlier and these the scouts. Everything has been fantastic. Uh, so yeah, uh, very very happy with that. And Carlos had said last Tuesday, I think it was, 
Uh, there's going to be one more signing, kind of a depth piece. Uh, do you have any updates on when that might be happening? No, no, no updates on that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Derek also said that um, he wants to use his experience for the guys that don't have that much experience playing in MLS. How important is that for guys like him or other players to be able to give that when you're going, you know, you're traveling from East to West Coast or anything like that? Yes, uh, that that's that was very important uh, when you talk about him, about even Dax McCarthy, you know, uh, that experience that they can bring to others and to themselves and understanding MLS is not an easy league. Is uh, You have to take many considerations when you come to MLS, the travel, the different surfaces, the weather, uh, the, the type of season, long season, you know, different to the whole world. and. You know, this, this situation that you only live in MLS and it's difficult to adapt, so it's always good to have guys uh, in the locker room talking uh, to others about these complications and how they can overcome that adversity or certain moments of adversity. So it's very good that, that we have those type of signings this year. Other than Caleb and Edwin, anybody who won't play tomorrow? Well, obviously Bartos because of the yeah. visa, Aiden Torres who's coming back from a little bit of an injury in the okay. offseason. Uh, so he trained this, this week, but uh, but won't play tomorrow. Other than that, I cannot. Shian might get some minutes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just wasn't sure what you're training today. Yeah, he's, he's, he's fit. I mean, he was in season, so he's been training on its own, and, and today he trained with the team. I, I think that's good enough. Okay.